keep promises and commitments. You'll notice that I posted here, keep promises and commitments to dot, dot, dot. There are many people we can keep promises to. You can keep promises, obviously, to friends, promises to your spouse, promises to your employer, promises to God himself. But what I want to talk about is keeping promises to yourself, keeping promises to yourself. Sean Isaacs here. Welcome to another day of Daily Nuggets of Wisdom. You will notice if you're part of my personal Facebook page that I am now broadcasting from my, uh, I guess it's the fan page. I don't remember what this page is called. But what I want to say right at the outset that if you want to continue to be inspired, encouraged, strengthened, blessed by my Daily Nuggets of Wisdom, then in order to get them, I want to encourage you to do two things. One, subscribe to my channel, Sean Isaac's channel, and make sure that you like the, not the personal page, because that has a max of 5,000 people, but my uh, other page. I think that may be a fan page. All right, so I want to try to be really brief and talk a little bit about the importance of keeping promises, uh, not just in general, promises to others, promises to God, but promises to yourself, promises to yourself. Um, I, I think, you know, it's important, obviously, that if we make commitments to God, that we keep them. That if we make commitments to others, that we keep them. But I believe those two levels of commitment are directly related to our ability to keep commitments and promises to ourselves. So some of the reasons why you should keep promises to yourself, some of the reasons why you should do that. Well, let me quickly talk about some of the some of the ways we don't keep promises to ourselves and how it impacts our life, the impact that it has upon us, right? Number one, when you don't keep promises to yourself, it affects or impacts your ability to follow through. Your ability to follow through. You know, one of the signs of or qualities or virtues or characteristics of a diligent person is they finish what they start. So follow through will be affected when you don't keep your own commitments or promises to yourself. There's also a lack of personal mastery. Or if you're thinking biblically, the scriptures say there are, I think, at least three places in the Proverbs that it says, he that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that's broken down and without walls. So when you're not able to rule yourself or master yourself, it's like a city broken down without walls. So when we don't keep commitments to ourselves or promises to ourselves, what that tends to do is it impacts our ability. Uh, it destroys our ability to master self or rule self. The Apostle Paul says it this way in 1 Corinthians 9. He says, I beat my body, I bring it under subjection. That's Paul's way of saying, I keep myself in check. I rule myself. If you don't keep commitments to yourself, if you don't keep the promises you make to yourself, you will, it will affect your ability to master yourself. For example, what are some of the areas that we tend to make commitments to ourselves and we don't keep? Well, I'm going to get up early in the morning. If you hit the snooze button, you're not keeping the commitment to yourself. You say, I'm going to get up at a certain time every morning. Every time you don't do that, it affects your integrity. It affects your confidence. It affects your ability to be courageous. It impacts or weakens your courage. I've said that already, that it affects your courage, but I think it weakens courage. It weakens resolve. So when we keep promises to ourselves, when we keep commitments to ourselves, it strengthens those areas, right? What about the commitment, I'm going to start writing my book, or I'm going to finish my book, or I'm going to work out regularly. I'm going to juice daily. How about I'm going to stop smoking? I'm going to stop using porn or other things that are uh, uh, vices that are addictive in nature or evil at heart, right? Vices that are not only dangerous, but destructive. What about the idea that I'm going to start being smarter with my money, right? I am going to launch a business. Every time you and I make commitments or promises to ourselves and we don't keep those commitments, 
It affects our ability to follow through in other areas. It affects our ability to master ourselves. It affects, uh, it weakens our integrity. You know, if you believe integrity is important, is an important thing, and you feel, you know, I lack integrity with people, I, I would I would encourage you to start with looking at what is the what does integrity look like in the way you deal with yourself, right? Do you keep those small commitments that you make to yourself? I'm only going to have one plate of food. You know, maybe for some that's a big commitment. I'm going to eat a fruit every day. Maybe that's a small commitment. I'm going to floss every day. You may think these things are not connected to every area of your life, but it is connected to every area of your life. So when we don't commit, com keep commitments to ourselves or keep our promises to ourselves, it weakens our courage, it weakens our resolves, it destroys confidence. You know, one of the big things that's very popular in our day and in America, throughout America, right, is self-esteem. That's the big buzzword over the last 20 plus years, self-esteem. I don't like that word because scripture says in Ephesians 5 that no one hates themselves. Our problem is not self-esteem. Our problem is we have images that are flawed, that are broken. See, God made man in his image. And our self-image, if you like that, I like that better. Our self-image is weakened and destroyed every time we break promises. When we break promises to ourselves, when we break commitments to ourselves, it weakens not only our integrity, but it weakens our image of ourselves, And the image that you and I have of ourselves has everything to do with commitments we keep to others, the commitments we keep to God, if you have a relationship with God, and so on. So all these things are, all these things are related. Now, what, what are some of the benefits of keeping promises to yourself? Well, it builds integrity. It builds confidence. It builds discipline. Discipline. There is no successful person that I know who has earned or worked for what they have that did it without discipline. There's no wealthy person I know, not that I'm lifting up wealth as a virtue in and of itself, because for some people, wealth is a vice. But there's no wealthy person that I know that did not inherit wealth, that obtained what they have or their level of success without discipline. Believe it or not, when you keep commitments to yourself, small commitments, small promises, you know, maybe that commitment is I'm gonna write in my journal for five minutes every day. Maybe it's not smart that you commit to writing in your journal for an hour every day. Maybe that's unrealistic. Maybe that's not smart to do. And this is why you're unable to keep the commitment to yourself. Here is a little nugget of wisdom. If you wanna keep your promises and commitments to yourself, make small promises and small commitments so that over time you build up habit, you build up consistency. See, once you develop habit, right, and habits allow us to master areas of our life, then it makes it a lot easier to keep commitments to ourselves. Another thing that keeping commitments do is, and I'll end here, is it adds virtue to our life. And this is an area that I don't know that a lot of people, especially Christians, God's people understand. The importance of virtue and the power of virtue and what virtue is. For example, there is a narrative or a story in the New Testament where Jesus heals a woman with the issue of blood. This woman had, the Bible describes her as a woman who had spent all that she had to try to heal herself, to take care of herself. She had gone to physicians. There was nothing any of them could do for her. She spent all of her, of her resources to get healing. And yet it could not be found. And then, uh, and I hope I'm not mixing up the stories here, but this woman touched the hem of Jesus's garment. She touched his clothes. And then Jesus says something that maybe you skip over, but it can be life-changing if you understand it. He says, who touched me? Virtue left me. Now, what is virtue? Virtue is the opposite of vices, right? 
Virtue is the opposite of a vice. Patience is a virtue. Peter says, add to your faith virtue. What virtue does is virtue actually adds power to our life, right? It adds power to make things happen, power to do things. So the opposite of that is also true. When we do and develop habits or vices in our life, they steal or they rob us of virtue. They rob us of power. Makes me think of Proverbs 31, where King Lemuel, his mother taught him, she says, my son, don't give your strength or don't give your virtue, don't give your power to that which destroys kings. What are the two things, according to King Lemuel's mom, that destroys kings? And I don't want you to think of a king just as the king that's married to Queen Elizabeth or someone that's in ruling over a kingdom because we are all created to be kings and queens. We are all created to take dominion. We've all been made to dominate our realm, our world, the environment that we're in, dominate our own habits, temptations, rule over those areas of our life that cause us pain and suffering, right? She says, don't give your strength to that which destroys kings. And those two things were alcohol and him as a male, women. Don't give yourself your strength, your virtue to that which destroys kings. Why should a king have virtue? Because a king has to make wise decisions. A king has to rule. A king has to be able to fight against, make this more practical for you and I, over temptations and destructive habits. So I want to end here because my commitment as I begin to re-engage with my daily nuggets of wisdom is to keep these under 15 minutes. I don't know how long I've been on. It's probably about 15 minutes. Um, I want to encourage you that one, if you're new to daily nuggets of wisdom, make sure you subscribe to my channel here. Uh, also subscribe to YouTube because I am not only, if something resonates with you, I'm not going to assume anything here is helpful to you. If it is helpful, if it's beneficial, if it's challenging, encouraging, comforting, insp inspiring, whatever word you want to use, because every day is different, then I would encourage you to make sure you like the channel, make sure you like my YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, hit the bell. Uh, a lot of new things are going to be happening with YouTube over the next few days or weeks. Uh, new content that I'm going to be putting out. And um, and if you are blessed by anything I'm doing, well, that's one way to find it. Um, for those of you that are part of my personal channel, uh, I'm making a commitment, and I'm talking about commitments, that I'm not going to do my daily nuggets of wisdom there anymore. I'm going to do them on my fan page. Um, for a lot of different reasons, but I will seek to repurpose them or repost them to my personal page. So uh, as usual, if something here resonates with you, like, share, comment. Um, hello from Georgia. Hey, how you doing, Georgia? What part of Georgia are you in? What part of Georgia? Easy to master a job. Master yourself. That's right, John. I, I think the hardest part the, the hardest thing to master is self, you know? Um, and this is why most people will do more for others than they will do for themselves. And what I mean by that is, most people will be more diligent, more committed to working on a job for someone else than they would be working for themselves. A lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of people in business, a lot of uh, Christian or non-Christian business owners and entrepreneurs treat their business like a hobby. But when they worked for someone else, they put in 50, 60 hours a week, and they wonder why they're not able to create the results that they need. The more you and I, and I'm not saying I have it all together, but the more you and I, because I think, you know, when you think of having it together, it's, it's a state of perfection, right? Which is consistency all the time. I think we all have weaknesses. We all have areas where we are not as consistent as we ought to be. And so we need continual reminders to do the right things. We need continuous, continual reminders to do the things that we must or that we feel we need to. All right, so that's my thought for today, guys. Uh, welcome again to another Daily Nuggets of Wisdom. 
Uh, my nugget of wisdom is keep commitments and promises you make to yourself. It will build confidence. It will build your uh, image, your self-image, the way you view yourself. The reverse is true. The more you break promises to yourself, the weaker you become, the less, uh, the less confident you are, the less courageous you are, the less bold you become. And scripture says the righteous are bold as lions, right? What are the, who are the righteous? The righteous are the ones that do the right things. They do what is righteous. They keep commitments. They keep God's commandments, right? The righteous are bold as lions, but the wicked flee when no one's pursuing. Those who don't keep commandments, keep commitments, do righteousness. Again, this is so practical, it's transferable to many areas of life. You don't have to be a Christian or a child of God to embrace the principles that I'm sharing. My encouragement again, keep commitments and promises to yourself. It will impact every area of your life. Start small. Maybe it's just the commitment to floss every day. Not three times a day, maybe you start with just once a day. Believe it or not, you hit three or four days of doing that, it will transform other areas of your life. I want to recommend an app that I use that uh, I don't think it's free. I think there's a free version, but um, you know, some of the best things in life are not free. You know, people say the best things in life are free. That's not true. You know, the best thing in life is salvation, and that's not free. That will cost you everything if you're going to live for the Lord, and it costs Christ everything. But the app that I would recommend is Streaks, S-T-R-E-A-K-S. Streaks is a habit-forming app that allows you to build streaks of um, consistency. And it gives you notifications. It's actually a really cool app. I use it for writing. I use it for journaling. I use it for juicing. I use it for exercising. I use it for, and these are some of the areas that I seek to be faithful in, right? If you're keeping commitments to yourself, and promises to yourself. Another way of describing that is you are faithful. Faithful. He that is faithful in little is made ruler, but will be made ruler over much. Sean Isaacs here. Again, another day of Daily Nuggets of Wisdom. Uh, love, would love your feedback. Please share, like, comment. If anything resonates with you or you think it could be a help or a blessing to someone else today. Enough negativity online and offline. My goal is to try to temper some of that with um, inspirational thoughts. Be blessed, guys.